suit up, strap in, warm the tires, and leave on yellow. Time for the Mitsu Times Podcast. Presented by MitsuTimes.org, the home of the fastest Mitsubishi cars. With your host, Josh. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Josh from Mitsu Times. Today, my guest is Mr. Jeremy Williams. He is the owner and driver of one of the coolest and fastest white 2Gs out there. How you doing today, Jeremy? Doing great, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I don't know about one of the fastest white 2Gs out there. There's a couple other ones out there. There. There's not a whole a lot of white different. white ones. I, I was I was just thinking about that earlier. Like, man, who who really has a white 2G? Oh, Brian. Brian comes up first. Yeah, yeah that's true. If I just I just saw him selling his carbon fiber doors. I might have to get some carbon fiber doors now. But who knows? <laughs> I wonder what he's doing now that he's selling that. Yeah, I don't know. Making a mm. pro mod. Everybody's making pro mods. Right. Every, everybody's pro mod. That's the next move, right? <laughs> Might as well join the crew. So, Jeremy, you've had some setbacks in 2023, let's say. Let's talk about uh, the setup going forward in your beautiful white 2G. Yeah, so um, basically lost lost the engine at the end of the season this last year. Um, so kind of decided to kind of take a step up. So I just want a full aluminum rod engine um still just 10 to 1 actually ended up having to stay with a wet block the original goal was to to be filled but it just didn't kind of come about so it's going to be a full wet block um still on just a 2g head with just kigley springs s3 cams kind of your basic run of the mill off the shelf um going to switch over to a 62 66 to start just for kicks uh from the 30 65 not going to take too big of a step up right away but it'll be something i guess heading in the Um, right direction at least in the right direction, right? Well, hopefully. So, yeah, that's the goal. Um, yeah, everything else is basically still the same. It's just uh, an old full race ram horn, T4 manifold, the uh, jam fab billet drag intake. Uh, on an auto now, so that's kind of the one thing that I haven't actually been able to do any passes on yet. Uh, when the engine let go, I had already done the swap. And actually at the shootout this year, I had already swapped over to auto, but I was having some shifting issues. Mm. Uh, basically didn't have second gear when I was at the shootout. Um, that's all ironed out um and uh yeah the transmission is just kind of your basic build as well it's just a it's a liberty gear liberty transfer gears um kigley's uh clutches just a shift kit and it's currently just on a stock restall um with all of the we'll we'll just call it converter issues that have been out there recently (laughs) i just i just had a stock one restalled and, and called it good um and then it's just a dry shot to spool it and uh gonna manumatic shift it for now because i'm still just on an evo adcu so there's no transmission control whatsoever gotcha um yeah so just kind of kind of keeping it that way to kind of roll in the next season um looking more oh and um was able to get uh tony nemechek was selling his uh tubular rear subframe that was good for uh uh 2g discs and I, I think he's on a 3000 gt one now i can't, I can't remember exactly what he switched to but uh so i i bought his rear his rear subframe because i was having some twisting of subframe issues the last couple shootouts as well I so that. yeah yeah so that should solve that that'll i'm sure that'll make chance happy because you won't have to be welding on my stuff every single day <laughs> um and uh yeah other than that it's just uh what i got uh t case is just a 300 m shaft uh, with um, Magnus's front cover or cover on the transfer case, and uh, just had TRE put that together for me, and just had TRE rebuild a stock 2G rear end in it. So nothing really that that, that somebody couldn't true. replicate. No, no, it's all it's all everything's off the shelf, you know. Um, if, for the most part, besides the intercooler pipes that that Warren welded up and he welded the end tanks on my on my intercooler but nothing that's you know that you couldn't get anywhere else really yeah. for the most part i love that that's yeah and then uh fuel system as well so i have just fuel system so it's just a uh single aem 400 in line with dash 10 feed and id 2000s so and we run uh or i run uh gem for my fuel oh, okay just for, just for kicks just to try and get that little edge you know to, Not get, that everybody else isn't running it, too. <laughs> Just a little yeah. tiny extra. Right, yeah. So, Jeremy... Made a difference. 
Why is it that, that you run the 2G as opposed to a lot of your teammates running all these other different platforms? What, what drew you to the 2G? So I don't know if you've met us before, um, but uh, we, we can kind of start talking a little trash back and forth. <laughs> and when I met Warren originally, he had a, a 1GA and I had a 2GA, and that has never really changed. So okay. <laughs> it's always kind of that uh, back and forth banter that we have that, you know, my 2G will kick any 1G that he has around. And <laughs> it's, it's it's been that way for 20 years or however long it's been now. And that hasn't changed. I'm, I mean, at the end of the day, it was kind of my first, it was actually the first car that I basically bought on my own. Oh, wow. Uh, I bought a, back in, back in 1998, I bought a 1995 all-wheel drive Talon. And, but at that time it was actually used as a daily driver and nothing else because Back then, you know, there wasn't, well, first off, there hadn't been a movie brought out that has seen one of those cars <laughs> in it yet. And then uh, my uh, living in the small town area, the, the, the internet wasn't quite as plentiful. You know, my, my dial-up wouldn't load the pages fast enough to be able to browse <laughs> lots of different things real quickly. So Didn't know what uh, people were doing yet. Yeah, well, funny enough, the only reason I ended up buying it was at the time, uh, I was I was going to school, but I was working on the side. And one of my coworkers needed a ride to go pick up a car he had, and I thought I was cool because I had a a '93 Probe GT, and I thought that was you know sweet, whatever. And uh, we went and picked up his car, and he picked up a a '93 all-wheel drive Laser. And then we did uh, we did pulls on the freeway all the way back home, and he kicked the crap out of me on every pull we did. And I'm I'm relatively competitive, so. About a year and a half later, I bought mine. That, that's when you learned you need to get one. Mm-hmm. So what was this one like when you first got it? Was was it pretty much bone stock? Bone stock. It was actually a lease return. No kidding. Yeah, actually, at a dealership, lease return, hadn't even had, like, the front control arm recall done or the, the TKC yoke addressed whatsoever. You know, that leak that was going on, that recall. So, yeah, bone stock bone bone stock and then it was just a lot of slow but slow internet browsing through all the old uh, sites that used to be out there i I was on vfaq for hours every single day and basically printing off all the pages and on road races site looking up for all their information they have on suspension setups and obviously the six bolt and like marco's right up on the six bolt and the 2g and all that other fun stuff and just it's, figuring out things how to go faster you know yeah like, it slowly guided your car to what it is now yeah well yeah i mean it's 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 there's been many iterations in between and actually many chassis in between too but basically since 98 my primary daily driver has been a dsm wow not a lot of people can say that no, it's probably with good reason, but <laughs> who would want to? Right? No, uh, no, they've actually been great. Like I've, I've had, um, you know, I mean, they're, they're work. There's no question about that. And obviously there's upkeep and maintenance and, and uh, some people don't want to put that time. And at, at the end of the day to do it and get a good one, you have to trust who you got it from and you have to be able to do all the maintenance and having somebody else do it's expensive. So. Yeah. And if you don't obviously, have the, the passion to keep it alive, it's, it's going to die on you. Well, yeah, you have to become a mechanic just by default. So. <laughs> and you have to be, you know, like you said, you have to be uh, willing to do some research. You're not just gonna yeah. take it in. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a lot too because it was. I remember, I remember the initial stuff. Do the free mods first, where you cut your intake box, and then I'm like, oh, I can get a couple psi if I pull this little restrictor plug out of my boost control solenoid, and you know all those little things, and going kind of going through all the steps. Um, back when they were still first out, which was kind of kind of cool, because now, you know, the first thing you're supposed to do is throw at least a 64 millimeter turbo on it, go E85, and right. run 40 pounds of boost, and make somewhere between 600 to 1,000 horse, and or else you're not doing it. Right. Some but, kind of forward yeah, facing right? manifold, and yeah. yeah, I mean, at least that's at least that's what the internet tells you. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely it's definitely different now with uh for what people get exposed to early on when they first get into this mm-hmm. scene, I guess, or at least as far as the DSM scene. And uh, obviously I think Evos have corrupted that because of how much power you can make so easily with those too. And, and uh, now that these cars are slowly getting older and older, there's just more, more care has to be taken, which I don't think a lot of people realize sometimes. 
Yeah, unfortunately, that seems to be the case. Yeah. Let yeah. let everything else fall to the to the wayside, and then blame the car. Right. Yeah. 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 Like I say, I that that's always it's always bugged me when people have always said that you know they weren't good daily drivers, but but they're unreliable. I mean, I drove. I drove to Key West and back. I've driven. I, I my my folks live or I was. Where I was living at the time, school was an hour and 25 minute commute one way, and I was doing it every day. So, wow. I mean, I racked up, and don't get me wrong, it only had, I don't know, 55,000 miles on it when I bought it. But I mean, I put on probably 70,000 miles pretty quick on it, and it didn't really care. Yeah. But, you know, I did the timing belt when the interval happened, and, you know. I think the only thing truly dangerous to daily drive is a 3000 GT VR4. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story about that, but that was probably Warren's most reliable car ever. So we won't okay. get into that one yet either. <laughs> Golly. Still pretty stock this time. Man. Oh, wow. Seems like even in stock form, they they love to be on the side of the road. I don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same thing, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, people don't take care of them as well as they should. And, or, or, they should as far as they need to and uh you know you don't you don't maintain something that's gonna break down eventually yeah for sure so <laughs> after uh after getting beat in your probe and, and you finally got your hands on this 2g what did you have any original goals with it you know i didn't really know a whole lot about it at first I, i'm not gonna lie when i first bought that car i had zero automotive knowledge whatsoever like the the extent of my autom- automotive knowledge was I took a small engines class in eighth grade, <laughs> you know, so that was, that was about it. Yeah. And, um, so it was, it was, it was legitimately through, um, researching through, like I say, the VFAQ constantly, cause they basically, the write-ups that were in there were great. And a, a, something as simple as just installing a boost gauge or whatever. And, um, so I didn't know what the goals were. There were probably, there were probably higher goals than what was feasible, which I think is still the case nowadays. Like everybody thinks their goal is I'm going to go out and run eight. So I'm going to go out and run, you know, whatever. Right. Take down the red demon. Just just tomorrow, you know, (laughs) but that's not going to happen. So, I mean, there's always, there's always just kind of, I guess my goal is just always trying to be quicker. Yeah. Like what can I, what's the next thing I can do to just be quicker? So it was, um, small steps with that one like but but like i say probably pretty typical for for back then just a basic turbo excess boost controller a super afc uh that had the plastic bluff out so i went and got a gritty type s bluff out so i could run a little more boost and uh yeah i mean that was about it i mean still stock exhaust on the t25 until the t25 let go and then once that let go decided to upgrade and found a gritty 18g turbo kit and oh, wow. uh yeah no it was fancy full cast intake pipe and all. i was i wish i still had all that you made a big job but um yeah no it's huge it's huge run like back in the day being being all being all cool running 17 18 pounds on a 18 g i thought that was you know pretty <laughs> awesome so um i think that's yeah, awesome the, today <laughs> yeah i know right also also gotta have like the little dancing light auto meter uh uh narrow band gauge in there yep, yep. Make sure I can watch my air fuel ratios on the on the green or red lights. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I went I went through all those, and uh, yeah, it just uh, it was it was it was pretty minimal as far as goals at that time because I was from I was from a small area, a small town in Michigan, Ludington area, and there wasn't a lot around. Like there wasn't there wasn't a scene, there wasn't a car scene, and if there if there was, it definitely had nothing to do with anything import wise. So. Um, I was kind of solo in in that area for a long time until until I moved to the Lansing area. Okay. Yeah, so that's and then of course that's when everything goes south from there as soon as I moved to Lansing. So, <laughs> yeah. Then you meet the wrong people, right? Right. I know bad influences all over the place. So besides the uh, the eighteen G and the T twenty five, has there been any other setups in your life that that you really liked that people you know maybe if they're looking to um switch setups one that you would really recommend well i mean they don't really make well i mean i guess you can get the gear one so uh actually i the turbo that's on my car right now is actually the one i bought originally back in 2004 it was the fp3065 mm. which is still probably one of my favorite turbos for cars on the street um we've had that on 
on every every car and like I say it's back on my now it's just it's so much fun uh for for a street car you know horse park I mean I know everybody wants the 8 or 900 horse but you know, on a on a DSM, and obviously now it's probably closer to like an FP Black type size, but you know that that 500 horsepower, in my opinion, on a streetcar on a DSM is kind of that sweet spot where you're not really replacing stuff all the time, yeah. and you're actually able to enjoy the car um, and keep it as um, comfortable and not cut up and hacked up as you possibly can. And that's that's kind of my one. So I guess I guess if I had to pick one now, it'd probably just be especially from a bolt-on application, it'd probably be like an FP Black um, or go, somewhere in that range. Can't go wrong with the Black. Yeah. No, we've done we've done a, all the cars that we have around here, we've recommended FP Blacks on. So I've got, there's a 2G with an FP Black. We had, I don't know if you saw the, Warren posted up that 1G that has, that's full carbon now that we've put together. Yeah. That, that's on an FP Zero. Um, so like kind of all in that range. Um especially from a bolt-on perspective it's it's just uh really neat and tidy packaging and uh it's uh, you can kind of go anywhere from if you really wanted to you know 400 up to somewhere around six six fifty seven if you're on the zero probably if you're going full tilt with ethanol or you know so i mean it's, it's got a full range but it's just it's a fun it's a fun street turbo in my opinion because if you just want to cruise around it's it's got great manners on the street. It's kind of lazy enough to be, you know, get decent gas mileage, which I should prove my age if I'm actually talking about that. But you know, it's just kind of comfortable cruising around. But if you just, that's why you got that little stick on your right hand. You can shift it into a different gear, put your foot down, and when it wakes up, it's it's a fun time. Plus, you ain't got to worry about buying a whole bunch of crap. I mean, it's just it bolts right on. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna need obviously supporting mods but you don't have to worry about well absolutely forking over a manifold and that's and that's kind of another big thing is people don't realize how much how expensive it really is to actually get to that point uh and actually have full support from the rest of the systems in the car too yeah. you know from fuel or whatever but so the, yeah that the the 3065 like i say that 3065 is still probably my favorite one okay there's something about that there's something about that garrett whistle i don't know <laughs> it's just me i guess i don't know what what turbo was it that that took you into the 11s for the first time, Jeremy? Uh, thirty sixty five. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so, boy, that was uh, well, I guess driving technically it was an eighteen G, but on my own car it was a thirty sixty five because I ran a I ran eleven eighties in a in the Colt while well, actually in Free Candy. Uh, I don't know how many. 2015 shootout something like that when it was still on an 18g mm -hmm. uh, that was probably the, that was the first time i ever ran a ever drove one but um in my car it was 3065 in the current chassis that it's in now um yes yeah, still has a five speed and that would have been at mcr so marion county raceway and that was still when kevin jewer still owned the track yeah uh, we went down there for his event and um Actually got to race, never forget it, this why I'm 1 0 against Sean Werning, by the way. Uh, <laughs> race Sean Werning heads up and ran 11 20 against his 11 40. This is not documented on a podcast, just so, <laughs> just so he doesn't forget. Um, yeah, so th it was, I was running 11, I was like 11 50s, 11 60s all day, and then raced one against Sean where I had to probably drive a little harder and ran 11 20, so I'll take that. But, um, and then, and then, after that season, that's kind of when all the problems started ru running into. Mm. Um, found out that the rear subframe really wasn't designed the way I needed it to be, and that's kind of when I started twisting those. Um, and uh, started kind of getting at the end life of the clutch. By the way, great clutch I had in there. Didn't have any issues. Still a single disc, but uh, was kind of at the end of its life. On the shootout of 20, 20, uh, 2020, 2020? 2020 or 2021. I think it was 21 and uh, I had to, had to fix the subframe, put it on the track, ran the 1060. And then the second time out kind of hot lapped it a little bit and ended up running a 1040, but didn't have fourth gear. So I was running 135 all day and ran, ended up running a 1040 at 116. Cause I basically coasted across the line. And then that's kind of, that's kind of the end of when that car has been doing any passes really. It's been, 
it's showed up places. Yeah. And that's about it. Yeah, it's been it's been kind of rough. But I mean, that's just kind of the way it goes sometimes. You'll for have, sure. You have success for a year and kind of move things forward the way you want, and then unfortunately for me, I ended up running into multiple different issues that took a while to kind of figure out and decide which which direction I wanted to go, and you know, just keep pushing forward. I've got I've got a pretty amazing team around me that that keeps uh, the motivation up and high yeah, and I was gonna say won't let you quit yeah yeah no no well, yeah absolutely not because we're also start lots of trash talking starts and gets even worse <laughs> i remember you know i think it was the the second year in a row i, I came over to the antelag pit and i seen your <laughs> course up ass in up in the air and i thought oh yep. god not again I, yeah i just wanted to see chance again and have him come weld on my car again <laughs> that's all no it was uh so the first time the first time i twisted the original subframe that came with the chassis and when i started looking at it and once i once it broke and twisted i i see why it twisted it wasn't made to handle anything and i'm on a 26 inch slick and you know i mean it, it just wasn't gonna handle that torque so i had uh boy i had chance come over i had who was in the pits like don bangs just came over and took a look at things and he was cringing as i'm pounding on things and chance was welding stuff up and we just threw that through the rear end in and that's when I ran that 1060 and 1040. And then last year or well, 2022, which was the second year I was up in the air. Um, yeah, just, it's kind of the same thing. Everything was just kind of out of whack. I just retwisted everything again. So it is what it is. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't disappointed, especially out at, uh, out at an event like that where you're seeing everybody you want to be hanging out with anyways and right. just kind of go and have a good time so it kind of takes the, and then, takes the stress off for the weekend oh absolutely the the difference between it well and that's what happened this last year actually was because i didn't have second gear which we were doing just a cr crazy scramble and it sounded like we had it on the lift and it sounded like it shifted into second it sounded like i shifted all gears but once we got it on the ground there was definitely no second so we basically just threw it on the trailer and went and my car became like a parts donor car. I <laughs> donated a, a slick to Matt Wheatley. I donated a, I think a TPS to Warren on the cold. I donated two of my other wheels. Um, and uh, it, it just, yeah, it just stayed, ended up staying on the trailer and became a parts <laughs> car. So. And I was cool with that. That's fine. Yeah. Was a good time. I had a blast. And you want to talk about no stress. I had no stress <laughs> that day. It was awful. So there wasn't going to be no putting it back together. No, no, no. Well, and then, I mean, the, I guess the biggest stress was, was obviously Warren coming off of the, the incident last year. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, having that back out on the track, obviously there was a little nerves for that one, but other than that, no stress. So it was great. Good deal. So you think, uh, looking at all those, you know, kind of headaches, setbacks, Jeremy, that, uh, you know, if you could go back and maybe pass on this chassis or, or change something mm -hmm. along the line that you would. Yeah. So, and I, you know, I was thinking about this I, and I've thought about it a lot uh, since I did this and I'll, I'll, I'll take it back to my bad influences again. Somebody started talking trash that on a stick in a 3065, nobody would be quicker than he was in his Colt. So I took that as a challenge. And if I would have just stuck to my guns, which my original plan was make this car an auto because it was already set up for it, had the auto shifter in it, had had everything set up to just go auto in it. If I would have just stuck to my guns and done that, instead of having that <laughs> that competitive side of me come out, uh, I would have already been auto years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, that being said, I had a lot of fun doing everything I did in between and sometimes you just have that learning experience and I, I, I kind of look at all of I've had a lot of failures in the last 20 years with that car with those cars you know like I've seen a lot of failures and I'm still learning new little things here and there too so yeah as long as you come away learning a little bit more knowing a little bit more I'm okay with it it's a little more expensive than I wanted it to be but it's okay I'll, I'll pay for my I'll pay for my lessons yeah but uh, unfortunately, Warren won the dollar on that bet. They're hard earned. Yeah. So, no, I think if anything, I think that would have been the difference. Um, the other thing too is I was originally I was I was hoping the chassis would be okay for street, but I I don't. It was a little bit more race car built than I thought when I initially bought it because I bought it um, kind of sight unseen basically. 
it was basically just with pictures. Um, the car came from Tennessee, and I just had it shipped up to Michigan, but I had that, sh- oh, what was that? It was like 2010. And uh, when I got it, you know, full X and the tubular rear, and it was it was gutted a lot more than I even thought. I was like, well, it's still got the sunroof in it, so I can, you know, streetcar it, and there's at least my <laughs> ventilation and whatever. And didn't even have a, the motor for the sunroof in it, so I'm like, eh, yeah, too much. So, because I've, up to this point, I've always been a streetcar guy. I've never been... I've never really raced. Like I've 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 enjoyed going to the track and you know, right. But I've always just done it in a street car. I haven't done it to try and you know blister any records or I'm not trying to you know set the world on fire. I was just trying to go out and have a good time. And anytime we took and make myself a PB in whatever setup I was in. You want to drive and, home in um, the car? Yeah, absolutely. Drive it, drive it there, drive it back. Like I don't trailer a car to the track. I drive it there, drive it back. So. um it was, it was, my, my initial plan was to still have it a street car, but, you know, once I finally started getting a look at it, it was, it was more than I wanted to take on. So it actually, the only bad thing about that was the chassis sat for about seven years before I did anything with it. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. Like I bought it and it just sat the way it was. And, uh, I had, um, the last, the last DSM I daily drove was a 1998 all wheel drive Talon. And uh, it was actually when I had my 95, I worked at the hospital in, in Ludington at the time. One of the physicians there who I know really well actually owned, well, he still did, owned this car. I remember parking next to him in the parking lot. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know. <laughs> and uh, I bought that car. Which, the only unfortunate thing about that is it's, it was a Michigan car its whole life, and it saw every winter. Oh, and it showed, yeah. Which is the only, you know. So... Uh, the rot was somewhat apparent, but I didn't think it was as bad as it really was. And uh, uh, there was construction on a road that I drove every day. And every time I drove on that road, there was a cloud of dust in the car. Oh, no. Because the rockers the rockers were so rotted out. I'm like, all right, I'm done with this. I can't do it anymore. And it was already on my 3065, and I already had it on E85. And, you know, I mean, it was making decent power. And... Um, that was when I converted everything actually over into the white chassis. It was when I just decided that I was done with that, that black chassis had had enough. So I'm like, well, I've got something to throw everything in. So I'll start putting that white car together finally. So the rockers were going before the strut towers. That's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. You know, um, and actually the other funny thing is, I mean, the, the, the strut towers had a little rust, but I actually blew out the rear strut tower mount first. No kidding. Well, it wasn't the chassis mount. It was the one on the actual strut itself. It was like the the bearing on the top. Yeah, <laughs> I remember my strut blowing through the bottom when I was driving down the street one day. So, <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was it was it was uh, ridden hard and put away wet and yeah. rusted out. So it's it's fine, but uh, just the way a DSM should be. Right, but uh, yeah, no that that was uh, that was the one that that I had that I didn't want to go out and get another daily. I'm just like you know I'd forget it. I'll just it's time it's time to build the build the white car and actually do it and you know it's kind of one of those things to where you get enough people around you telling you just do it so i transferred everything over and started driving that and that's kind of when the 11s happened and then put a built engine in it and that's when the 10s happened and then now here we are today so hopefully this year we'll we'll, we'll bring the next step forward uh, at least as far as the evolution of that and i'm pretty confident that uh, i've got most things ironed out that I'm I'm looking forward to a, to a fun season this season. Yeah, me too. I, this the the I don't know I I don't know how you would describe it. The the vibes for this season are already like I don't know. There's a lot of tension in the air already. Like people are gonna really yeah. go fast. Yeah. Well, I think the last shootout really kind of lit a fire for some people too. So that was really cool to see last shootout with how you know you finally get to see all that interest kind of back into it and kind of more hype into it and you know it's just it's, it just kind of brings it kind of brings more out it brings the competitive side of everybody out a little bit more i know everybody's always trying to do their pbs and 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 run everywhere else you know world cups and that sort of thing but yeah you know and i shouldn't say world cup so lightly by the way but you know <laughs> and uh but the the shootout just kind of has that draw that attention for the dsm community for sure that uh you know i'm 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 looking forward to it too but i know we've got a lot in the works too for well, all the cars kind of in our group so it should be uh gonna be a lot of work but 
my engine got done first, so my car will be running in the spring. Hell yeah. You heard that here. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, right? <laughs> I think, it, you know, it, it's probably strange to explain to, to, to non-Mitsubishi people, but I, I think for a lot of us, we would rather run a PB in front of our friends at the shootout than, than yeah. hit a PB in front of the sold-out crowd at World Cup. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with that one. I mean, you know, there's – yeah, no – Absolutely. There's no question. The, you know, the, the, the big thing about, and I mean, I don't know if it's, I, I hope it's this way for everybody. I know it is for me that um, when we go to the studio, it's like just seeing the family you haven't seen for a year. Oh, and for sure. it just kind of, it kind of picks right back up. And, you know, the first thing you got to do, you unload your car, you park it and you go try and find everybody you haven't seen and <laughs> go say hello and, you know, try and shoot the shit and, and, and catch up with them as much as you can. And, the only the only downfall and disappointment of most most times of the shootout is it's just too short. Like you don't have enough time, especially if you're running a car the whole time, or if they're running a car the whole time, to actually catch up with everybody you want to catch right. up with. So, you know the, I think as the years have gone on, the community has just gotten closer. You know, I remember when I first got in, I didn't feel necessarily that way that this was my first shootout would have been. I was I was late to the party, but it was like 2004. I think it was the first shootout we went to, mm -hmm. and. Um, it wasn't, I mean, it, 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 we weren't in the community quite long enough, and I don't think the community was as much of a community back then yet. I think it was still very, very competitive of, you know, one shop trying to be better than the right. other shop, you know what I mean, like to sell their parts and that sort of thing, which I get 100%, but um, I think it's gotten to be a lot more of, I mean, a family-friendly just kind of – you know, senior old friends type of event. So, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, you still want to be competitive and, you know, you know, talk as much smack as you possibly can, but uh, it's, it's definitely gotten, I think through the years, you know, a lot more um, community driven and that's kind of what it's all about and just kind of getting together, eating some good food, hanging out, seeing people you haven't talked to in a long time or well, a year probably. And uh, yeah, that's, so it's, it's a lot of fun and, Obviously, your your direct peers are the ones you want to, you know, share your achievements with. And, you know, anybody, anytime anybody in, that, that I know in any way, shape or form, you know, gets a gets a new PB, I'm, I'm right there with them. Cause it's, it's pretty awesome. It's, well, it's, it's, it's a lot, you know. And that's so why, it's a big you, deal. you know, the D-Sport guys are mad that no one's in the in the stands. But, you know, it's hard for us to be in the stands when our best friend is down there on the line ready to race. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. I can't you know what I mean? Or, or, or your, or your friends are back in their pits because they just did their run, and you want to go either congratulate them or hang out with them or right. you know, see what's wrong. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like that's that's the hard part, and that's and like I think that's yeah, it's a negative from the stands perspective, but that's because everybody wants to be, you know, in in the pits with all the people they know. For sure. So, it's different. Yeah, I, I, I get. It's I different at World Cup because because you know. I, at World Cup, I might know twenty people total, but right at the shootout, you probably know close to everyone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, to be fair, uh, at 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 World Cup, you also have uh, probably a lot more money riding on the line, and a lot more. There's probably there's probably more on the line for your shop or for you know what you do. Right. Um, whereas the shootout, you know, it's it's even though even though everybody's running and, and this last year, obviously the pool was big, which thank you very much. That was, it was awesome. It obviously, you know, big props to you guys for, for getting this thing where kind of where it's gone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but, um, you know, people still have time. Like they're not, you know, even, even if they're, even if they're working on their car and like, I gotta, you know, I, I, I torched the valve. I gotta swap ahead really quick. You know, if somebody comes up, usually they're, there's still time to chat a little bit. You know, they're not going to be like completely ignored. Like, it's it's just more it's friendlier it's it's more inviting it's just i don't know that's just kind of the vibe i was getting everybody always wants to come and help for that's sure thing too is they'll they they don't want to see anybody left behind so you'll see complete you know. strangers be like hey man what's up you know how can i help you know, absolutely just... offering offering parts offering yeah. you know whatever yeah yeah so it's it's just a different type of event because it's all the same or similar type community. Yeah. We all, we all share the similar passion. Mm -hmm. We're all crazy enough to do that. Right? <laughs> this episode of the Mitsu Times podcast is brought to you by ARH Automotive, home of the world's quickest 428 powered car. 
ARH Automotive is your one-stop shop. They specialize in fabrication but can handle everything from full builds to simply getting the parts you need. Contact them for all your performance needs in the Clearwater, Pinellas, Florida region or on Facebook at ARH Automotive LLC or visit ARHAutomotive.com. So, Jeremy, would you say that it's your team that keeps you motivated to, to not give up on this car and, and to keep pushing it? I mean, you could easily, you know, probably turn it back into a street car and, and just enjoy it. But what motivates you to keep making it go quicker and quicker? Yeah, there's definitely the, the team side of it, um, because I think that's kind of I think that's kind of all of our goals um, is to kind of continually push ourselves forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know. On top of that, we all, we we kind of want to keep it on a competitive side too. Like I don't want, like for example, Andy just bought a chassis and he's going to start building a car. Well, I don't want to let his car be quicker than mine. So you know, <laughs> got to do what I got. So yeah, do. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to catch the cold by any means, but you know, it, it's there. There's still that. There's still that competitive side. There's also still, you know, there's a little bit of pride involved with, you know, the group. You'd be like, you know, we've put all this time and effort in. And there can be a pride involved with that, you know, without being too proud. But I mean, just to, you know, show well for the group as well. Like this is, this is what our group does, right? you know, and we, we have a lot of fun with it. And I think that's the biggest thing. And that's the thing that keeps us going is that it's just fun. Cause a lot of times it's just us hanging out. Like <laughs> our, we all have different nine to five jobs that have nothing to do with cars whatsoever. Right. And, but we'll still be. For example, we'll be in Andy's garage, you know, somewhere between three to seven days a week, you know, <laughs> somewhere in there, depending on what's going on. So it's one of those ones where you're around people that you want to be around, you want to hang out with. Um, and if that means, hey, somebody says, hey, there's nothing else to do, we should do something on your car. Well, then that's what happens. You know, it's like we, I find myself almost more motivated to work on other people's stuff which Mm -hmm. i think is kind of my my i I think i find warren and andy kind of pushing me to and dylan too to kind of push me to work on like let's yours is up next because i usually put everybody else in front of me anyways first because i like watching other people succeed it's for sure that that brings me a good time or if or if they have an issue that we need to figure out or if they need a part that needs to be installed or whatever it is you know just to get that done and see you know what you know the next step for them or the you know kind of continue them moving forward as well so uh yeah it just ends up getting reciprocated to where if if my car has been kind of sitting on the sideline too long they'll they'll be like all right let's let's get something done what do you what do we need to put on there you know so start knocking stuff out yeah so i mean it's it's definitely a it's definitely a a a group conscious group effort group you know uh, mentality to make sure that all of us succeed because at the end of the day, that's all we want is we just want all of us to succeed, all of us to get. And like you said, you want to have your PBs in front of your friends. And these are the people that I'm at the track with every time we go to the track. So, you know, we're, we're always, we're always trying to root for and, and push for that new PB. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I need, uh, need to get a team like that around me. Cause I feel like yeah, everybody's I mean, so, so far spread out. It's like, Oh yeah. 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 We're, we're pretty fortunate with that. I mean, we're boy so like andy and warren they live about a mile apart i'm about five miles away dylan's on the other side of town so 15 to 20 minutes away you know kevin's warren's neighbor (laughs) (laughs) all right right here and uh somehow we all got kind of eventually hooked up and we've been friends for i mean warren i've been it's been 20 years andy's been around for 15 wow you know i mean it's been Dylan's been around for at least 10 and just, we just all stuck around and had the same passion and the same drive and the same, you know, whatever, and just gonna push each other forward. So it's been a lot of fun. Sounds like it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, it's, if, if you're not having fun at it, you're not going to continue on it. That's right. kind of where I'm with it, you know? And I think that's, and like you say, you wish people were closer because there's not enough around. Well, it's hard to have fun when you're solo in your garage all the time and have the motivation for some people, not everybody, don't get me wrong, but for, for kind of the average person trying to do it, it can be difficult if you don't have everybody else that shares that same, that same drive or the same, you know, most of the time it's like, well, why are you doing that with that car? Yeah. You know, like 
if, if you if you get around a group that are all kind of the same mentality and they're like, yeah, yeah, let's do this, you know. Sometimes you need a and second set of eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, or just somebody to have a beer with or whatever, you know, yeah. like just come, come on and hang out in my garage while I rent or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anything like that. You know, sometimes that's all it takes. That's true. So, Jeremy, what would you say that your goal for or goals for 2024 are with this car? Yeah, so uh, first, kind of like what I was saying, is, is it running in the spring? I've, I've got uh, – I was luckily able to get my uh, car into the shop before the snow flew, so it, that's good uh, because it's hard to get it from the barn into the shop once the snow's on the ground. Oh, so. yeah. Step one was taken care of, so um, <laughs> my hope is to have it – running and ready to make a pass as soon as a track opens up locally. Um, and before summer or I should guess I should say by summer, uh, I would like to be comfortable to be able to go rounds in a nine Oh or nine fifty class. Oh dude. Killer. Is, is, is the goal of where I want to be. So I would like to have already, and once again, I'm not going to bench race or anything. I'd like to have already clicked off an eight something, mm-hmm. but be able to just comfortable or if I haven't a low enough nine tour me running nine fifties is not a, not a problem. So I don't, I don't try and bench race too much or I've done that enough in my past where I was going to, you know, I was going to run nines like 15 years ago and that never happened. So <laughs> used to be Cause everybody's going to run nines. I used to be all tuners was four back in the day. Right. Exactly. So yeah, it was uh, a little quarter mile at a time. So yeah, it was uh you know, I, I'm kind of past that point, but I think I think it's probably realistic to say that, you know, a 9.0 car is not outside the realm of with what that car is going to come out For sure. this year uh, to be. Um, I don't have intentions to try and push too far, but as the way everything that we do goes, that can change very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there's a couple larger turbos that are already sitting on the shelf and available if I get that itch. So, you know, um, with, like I say, Dylan's probably going to upgrade the 64 and Warren's going to upgrade the 76. So those two are there. So if I wanted to, I probably could, but I guess the first thing would be iron things out, make sure, you know, the car is um, consistent or consistent ish as consistent as a DSM can be. Right. And then, uh, and then decide what to do from there because we have we have a lot of work too so i'm not quite sure how many more changes i'll be able to make once i once i put it together and get it running mm. um because the, the the list of cars and builds we have and engine installs and everything this year is you there's enough, a lot you got enough to keep you busy already oh yeah that, that goes without saying every year but yeah <laughs> So, Jeremy, if someone, let's say they have, uh, you know, a somewhat stockish 2G, maybe uh, they're still running on a 16G or something, they're they're looking just to to start a build to maybe get up there where you are in the 10s, maybe even crack off a 9. What advice would you give them so so they can successfully complete their build without wasting a ton of money or, or having a bunch of setbacks? Yeah, I think I think one of the biggest things is uh, keep it running. Um, it's amazing how fast you lose motivation when your car is just sitting on jack stands for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of why I've always liked having the daily driven cars because I remember having you know a clutch go out and I swapped a swapped a clutch in a snowbank one year because I had to go to work on Monday. You know, it's but the car was always more fun. And there's more motivation to do every little step of work on it, including maintenance or whatever, if it just stayed running. I see too many people say, "All right, I'm gonna. This is gonna be my build. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put the newest, latest, greatest turbo on it. I'm gonna put the newest. You know, here's my engine build, whatever. And it's it's a big. I don't know if people realize how big of a ticket item it is. And just because something's built for a race car doesn't mean it's built for your car. Yeah. So. I think get 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 an idea and a plan and maybe a realization of what do you really want with this car? Is this something you want to have to be towing around every day to a track with you? Is this something you want to just be able to have fun without on the street? Is this something you are relying to get to work every day? Um, and just uh, research, research, research on top of maintenance, of course, because that's the biggest one. But um, ask questions. You know, if if 
there's a lot of times, uh, and you have to be careful of it, obviously, nowadays, because there's so much misinformation on the internet, too, but, I mean, some people, well, just some people just don't know, but um, ask questions, do your research, and, and don't try and do it all at once, because you don't go from running a 13 second car to running a nine second car you're not going to be comfortable in it and it's not going to go well yeah that's that's kind of my my biggest thing take those incremental steps learn on the way learn about the car what does it need next because you know you can throw all the money in the world at it and still run a 12 you know but kind of be disappointed if you did that right so i think i think the incremental steps is in my opinion uh the best way to go um, yeah, and not everybody want, you, you don't necessarily want to have 800 horsepower right out of the box. For and, sure. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. You, you think just because you see people on YouTube building 600 horsepower, yeah. 700 horsepower cars, does, that doesn't necessarily mean you can get behind the wheel and, and get it down the track. Well, well, yeah, well, there's that, but on top of that, they also don't show you about the stuff that breaks and the cost on top of that in between. Yeah. You know, and it's and these these drivetrains, especially in the DSMs, just they are a little bit more fragile than you realize, and you're gonna be spending money on drivetrain parts like crazy if you start making a lot of power. So always always consider that, uh, but but just try and ask around, do your research. The community's big enough, and there's you know enough of us around that. I mean, I have no problem talking. That's, that's what I like to do. I just talk all the time, but. It's, you know, that's kind of the way the community is now is, you know, come up and ask questions. Yeah. Ask somebody about the build, like if you see them at the shootout or at the track or whatever. And, you know, it's, um, it's, take it slow. One of these cars will nickel and dime you to death. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I've had lots of them, so I know all about that. I have no <laughs> more nickels or dimes left. So, yeah. So, Jeremy, you talked about a few of your past Mitsubishis and DSMs. Is there any other ones that, that we may have missed that you want to mention? Wow. That I've owned? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, boy, I mean, there have been so many in between. I, you know, the thing is, I, like I say, I never really raced much. Mm -hmm. uh, in between, I... I, I uh, the only other one that I... The only other one that I miss, miss, is my is my 98 Eclipse that I had uh, that I bought that was, I don't know, it was about 50,000 miles on it. The the kid had put a Buddy Club 2 kit on it but had a nice pearl green paint job on it, so I'm like, yeah, it looks pretty good. And uh, 50 trim turbo and mm -hmm. um, still on the stock engine. And unfortunately, the tires weren't the greatest, and uh, I owned that car for probably a year and a half. And that was right as they were starting to be able to flash Evo ECUs. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, no. They were start I'm sorry, no. Uh, CD started able to flash 2GB ECUs. Okay. And so we went out to go tune my car because it obviously had the 98 black box in it. So we were doing some pulls in the car, and it was a little wet, and it was – we were on, on, on a curvy freeway part and ended up putting that into the concrete barrier in the oh, middle. Oh, no. And a few times. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So – be careful out there, kids. Make sure you got good tires. So, yeah, it was uh, outside. Outside of that one, I mean, there's been so many in between that I've gone through, like steps in my one G. Like so, I guess I guess my other one G that I like is actually Andy's black one G that he has. Mm -hmm. uh, that was mine. Uh, before that, I don't know if people remember Bob, uh, this guy from Detroit that I bought it from. Um, boy, I don't even know how many years ago it was now. I'm... <laughs> The, the the memory fades quick, like as you get up to May. But um, yeah, so that that car between me and Andy has probably been around for the last ten to twelve years at least. So and that that was my daily for the longest time, and and I basically just kind of kept putting my I basically just had rebuilt stock engines. It was mm -hmm. like you know six bolt six bolt rods, the RP uh, rod bolts, and two G pistons. That's that was, that was basically the engine I swapped into everything. Um, until Warren bent the rods when it was in the Colt. So, um, but yeah, just put that from car to car and just got, kind of got nicer and nicer chassis as things went along. And there's just been too many of them. Like I can't even, <laughs> I can't even begin to start listing off all the ones I've had through. So you're not even exclusively a two G guy. You'll, you'll own a one G. No, 
Yeah, well, it was it was forced on me, unfortunately, but uh, that's okay. That's okay. I got over it. See, you know, as a two G <laughs> guy myself, I always look at the one G yeah. like like they're below me. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's that's evident. And it's <laughs> obvious, and it should be, but that's okay. No, I mean, I I will say there is one thing, there is one thing about the one G, and it's the interior that I actually like better than the two G. Because you you feel more like you're planted and sitting in a cockpit, and right. how high that console is up, and you got yeah. I will say that for the one G, but other than that, I'm I'm two G all day long. Just don't want those automatic seat belts choking you to death. Yeah, well, there's yeah, there's that too. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, Canadian seat belts wouldn't be as popular if they didn't if they weren't so terrible, right? Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's so it's the DSM the DSM journey's been long, but I don't see it going away or stopping anytime soon because it's just been a lot of fun. Well, that's what I like to hear. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like it's it's the 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 second families. That's what it's all created you know yeah so. can't just leave your family yeah no they'd find me i'm sure <laughs> so jeremy what events can we uh find you at in 2024 either in action or just in person yeah so um i think the biggest thing for most of this year is probably going to be um either at Milan or 131 um martin um and uh I don't know how many events we're going to end up getting to. Um, there's a lot of big hopes, like I was talking to you about Dylan earlier, and, and I know Andy wants to maybe try and do Dragon Drives, but that car might not be done for a while yet. But um, obviously the shootout's going to be one we're definitely going to be at. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the that's the only probably guaranteed one, at least as of right now, because you know who knows where the car's going to be honestly or or any of our cars are going to be when when we're ready to go so i'd i'd love to be able to start doing ifos or or any of the you know pour your own puddles or, we have a local track that i'll see if they'll let me ride on it i don't know if they'll let an all wheel drive run run it on a digger or not but i know christian has i think but i'll see if they'll let me on that track too it's like a no prep thing yeah it's all no prep so that's no prep eighth mile there so uh, that's that's probably the biggest plan. Other than that, I mean, if you're ever in the Lansing area, you know, we're always in a garage or around or whatever, ready to yeah, hang out any weekend, and that's not a problem. I see all the uh, Instagram stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Warren, <laughs> Warren's, Warren's our Warren's our Instagram guy. He's a social uh, media guy. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I'm I'm probably still living in my dial-up world from back in the day, so <laughs> I don't have a lot of the. Warren always tell me, "Oh, you should probably post that." And I just hand him my phone. I'm like, "Here, put it, put it on there." Yeah, so. <laughs> make it happen. Most, most, most posts you see from me, Warren probably actually put up there and <laughs> put it on there for me because it's not my forte. Well, speaking of Jeremy, where can people find and follow you on social media if they can at all? Well, I mean, like I said, well, I mean, obviously my Facebook page, that's perfectly fine. Um, but probably more so is actually on Warren's really like the anti like underscore 200 because he's all over the place. And he usually posts probably most everything from all of us on the group, really. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm, I'm sure most people listening to this are already following that anyways. So, yeah, you, you'll you'll see most all of my story on that as well because he's letting us do all the work while he's got his phone in his hand taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he gets away with it. Right. I'm doing like, social oh, yeah, media. Yeah. Hold, hold on. I'm going to stand over here. This is for the grams. You guys keep pushing that car. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, Jeremy, at the end, I always give people a chance to uh, give a thanks or a shout out to anybody who's helped them get where they are or get their car where it is. I, I know you got a, a big list, so I'll, I'll just yeah. sit tight yeah. and, and let yeah. you finish. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know where to start. Well, first, I would say my fiance, G, she's – ridiculously tolerant of me in all shapes and forms and allows me to still do these childish things that I do and go out and play with cars. So that's, <laughs> that's number one. Um, obviously the whole anti-leg crew, um, Warren and Andy and Dylan, Kevin, uh, just, you know, they're just around every day. We're all together, kind of keeping each other going, putting each other up, making sure that we're, you know, all in a good headspace and all, all, you know, kind of trying to, push ourselves and go forward um the whole kigley racing crew um without kevin and aaron and i don't know like those two are those two are incredible so they've, they've helped so much and, and been a big support as well uh, tyler over at fourth engineering he's 
Well, he can be an ass, but he's a, he's a pretty damn good engine builder, and we'll talk smack to him all the time and kick his ass out on the go-kart track every once in a while. And then uh, Scott Glassbrook, you know, he's, he's just the, – the knowledge base that's around between all these people is, is just kind of crazy. Um, over at TRE, Aaron and John, those guys, they've – anytime we come in, they kind of drop what they're doing and say hello, and we can at least – you know, asking questions as far as as far as what we uh, need to do or what we're trying to do, and they'll kind of recommend as as much as possible. And you know, it's it's amazing how much all these people end up bending over backwards. Uh, all the people we get a hold of, like I like I was saying earlier, you know, the the, the family you see once a year, you mm-hmm. know, at the shootout, which is unfortunate. That's all it is. Uh, there's a group from you know Cincinnati, like I was telling you about, like the race with Sean, Sean Warning, like we've been. You know, that whole group just been able to hang out and have, have a good time every time we see each other. Uh, the guys from Indy, Aaron uh, Anderson at CSM, go to CSM TV, by the way. Uh, Aaron Anderson and Matt Wheatley and Matt, like th- that whole group, they're just, you know, anytime we have a chance to chat with them and talk with them, it's always a great time. Um, as far as shooting ideas back and forth and motivation and everything else. And yeah, it's just, I mean, the list can go on and on and on. And you always obviously have to keep the the big motivators out there when you when you start looking at the the the, the echelon or the top end of of the community to kind of keep you striving for to see what is possible. You know, you start talking about Devin and Aaron and Rich and you know Mike Waller and like just Kevin Jewer, like like I you know early early from early performance. Like I yeah. mean, you can go on forever and ever. Like it's just. I could name every name that I see at the shootout, you know, the Morrisons and like, I mean, to, to not stop, you know what I mean? So For sure. Now it's you. And obviously you, Josh, you know, you see the other one too, right? Like, appreciate it. It's been what, what everything that you've done has been huge too. Not only just, um, you know, doing this podcast and kind of asking the community what they want to hear about and talk about and see, and then obviously the push for everything at the shootout and kind of just getting more attention and, and, and kind of re-energizing a lot of the community really honestly so i mean that's awesome yeah that's, that's what I, that's what i'm striving for yeah absolutely and i mean like i say the, the big problem is I could, I could be listing pick a name you know put it on the list because <laughs> they're all there and that's the that's the great thing about this community is it's just everybody is each other's motivation to keep pushing forward and striving for what you want to do and be heck yeah all right well jeremy thank you so much man and uh, i can't wait to that's see you at the track soon it was my pleasure. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there myself. <laughs> I appreciate it, Josh. Yes, sir. I'll see you. All right, man. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Mitsu Times podcast. Check out our Instagram and Facebook for daily updates. Get added to our list by going to mitsutimes.org and clicking submit a slip. Thank you to all of our sponsors.